nothing happened. He's there. <laughs> I only see big pine trees. He's not telling you you're blaming his derveta. Uh, you're looking but, good, though. But, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm losing weight. <laughs> See, my wife says, she goes, you put on a lot of weight in the last year. I told her there's not a lot of healthy things to eat in the valley. You real good. How do you get through the valley? Come on. I, this is so hard to understand. But this is something I want everyone to take away that they really need to monitor or ponder, really need to meditate on, or really need to pray about. You have to release all control. Let me say it again. Release all control. It sounds easier than it really is, because I don't think many people truly understand how to surrender. Because when I stepped into the call, I thought I knew surrender. I said, I surrendered God. But I didn't. <laughs> and if you don't surrender, God's going to force you to surrender. <laughs> and you don't want him to force you to surrender. <laughs> Last year I was in Triavna in April. And I was in this nice hotel on the other side of the mountain. <laughs> and it was about 3 o'clock in the morning. And I had been working in the business for about six months. And the Lord came to me and he spoke to me. And he said, David, what is your most treasured possession? What is your most valued possession? And I says, Lord, my wife and my son, of course. And he says, you're not a Muslim, they're not for the <laughs> he, says, he says, your wife and your son are not possessions. So I said, he said to me, what is your most valued possession? I said, I don't drive a very nice car. He says, I wear clothes from 10 years ago. <laughs> I said, I said, I, I don't really know what my most valued possession is, God. And he said to me, he goes, it's your business. And he says, why do you hold it so tight and so close to you? And I said, I don't, God, I gave it to you. He says, no, you didn't. You hold it very close. You hold it very tight. I said, God, how can you say that? I don't hold it so tight. And he said, do you worry about it? I said, yes. He goes, and why do you hold it so close? He says, surrender to me today. He said, if you give it to me, if you give it to me, I will bring increase. I will bring splendor. I will bring magnificence. Those are the exact words he told me. If you don't give it to me, it'll never go anywhere. It'll only stay as big as you are. He says, release it to me today, and I will grow it beyond your wildest expectations. And he gave me a, a phrase, and he said, I will give you growth beyond reason. Because if we can reason what God's doing, He's not doing it. And the only way to experience growth beyond reason is to release all control to Him. And you have to release that control. It is an absolute 
uh, it is intentionally done by an individual. It is not something that supernaturally happens. It is an intentional process of giving it to God and saying, I will not worry about it. And the easiest way to tell whether or not somebody is truly surrendered to God and you can tell by listening to some of the men that are around us right now. If they know God called them into something, they say, I'm not going to worry about it. God will take care of it. Because the true sign of not surrendering is worry and anxiety. And when Jesus or when God says, do not be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, let your request be known to God. He is saying, surrender yourself. Because if you don't, you're disobedient. The other ways you can get through the valley is run a four by four. A cheap. You have to have very close friends who can account be accountability with you. Трябва да имаш едни много близки приятели, които да пред които ще бъдеш отчетен. Близки приятели, пред които да бъдеш отчетен. Now the key is to have people in your life that are close to you and don't have unrealistic expectations on you. Ключът на това е да имаш толкова близки приятели в живота си, които нямат because although you walk through the valley by yourself, you can have others who can support and encourage and motivate you. And the biggest gift they can give to you is encouragement. Because without encouragement, you'll never make it. You have to be able to see to the next milestone. You have to focus. Something that happens in a lot of people's lives is when God speaks to them and brings them through something wonderful. And they start going through the valley. They often forget about what God's done in the past for them. And I've done this many, many times. And you think, how am I going to get through this? But if God called you into it, of course He's going to get you through it. So you have to focus on the promise that God gave you. And no matter how hard something is, you have to meditate and think about that promise that God's put on your heart. Yeah. And the only way that promise comes is through that small, still voice. 22 people can prophesy over you. But the only way you can hold on to a promise and get through the valley if God speaks it into your heart, He'll never let you let it go. And that promise becomes your goal. And I intentionally would have to shut my door and I'd have to get on my knees and I'd have to remember that promise and think about it. And I'd have to meditate on it. And wash away all the other things that were going on in my life. 
да изхвърля всички тези неща, които не ми трябваха в живота. So I can't stay with enough emphasis. Focus, focus, focus. Така че оставам и поставям ударението върху това. Бъди концентриран.